Professor Wolf, thank you for joining us. I wanted to uh, ask you this question, which I genuinely don't know the answer to. Uh, the economy in Europe is literally plummeting uh, to the floor and beyond. But the economy in the United States does not seem to be. The pound and the euro are plummeting. The dollar does not seem to be. Why this dichotomy? Well, there are two ways of answering this. One way would be for me to explain that the United States economy is a very well-developed game in which a great deal of effort especially among my colleagues, economists, is devoted to making something look a lot better than it is. Let me say, just on a personal level, I was born in the United States. I've lived and worked here all my life. I have never seen the economic system here uh, in the kind of trouble it is in now. I have never seen the kind of divisions in this country that we have today, nor the bitterness and rage. Uh, the conversations turn on civil war here more and more. Uh, it seems as though whole parts of the country are determined to live literally on a different planet from where the rest of us do. And it, it gets worse. You know, I'm, I'm reminded that for 30 or 40 years now, Every leading official, uh, the first one that comes to my mind is our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, gives a speech every few months about how we have to be careful that the level of inequality in our society, which is greater than that in Europe by quite a bit, that that is a problem we must face. Every leading politician has said it, and no politician, none of them, including uh, Janet Yellen, has done anything uh, to even slow the, the growing inequality. The inflation in the United States currently at about eight and a half, nine percent, that's double the rate of increase in wages, which means, unless you don't know arithmetic, that the gap between employers who get the inflation of the prices they set and employees who have to pay those inflated prices without getting comparable wages that gap is getting worse still than it was before. That's the first part of the answer. Second part of the answer, when an economic system like Western private capitalism, Europe, Japan, the United States, and so on, when a system like that begins to crumble and when there are risks in moving your wealth uh, away from that area where you've kept it for a century, where are you going to put it? It's too early to give it to the Chinese. You're not so sure about where that's going, and nobody else is really in a position to attract you, so you put it with the dollar. If you're German or British or Japanese, you buy dollar securities uh, because at least in the short run, it's not as dangerous as doing what you might have done, <coughs> excuse me, before, because of the very conditions you began with, the deteriorations in Europe. But I think that's all that's going on. And my guess is you're going to see in the United States very similar uh, downturns in standards of living. We are hearing here about people who have not got the money this uh, winter to be warm. We are beginning to hear proposals like those in Europe of literally bribing the people to look the other way by giving them cash or some sort of uh, modest subsidy, anything to keep the game going. But there's a sense of desperation here that don't let the, the, uh, the public relations fool you. We are in very, very deep trouble, and no one has a clue how to get out of it. Uh, I don't think they've 
fooled me, but you certainly have set the record straight uh, tonally uh, on this question. I suppose what I mean is you have an inflation rate of 8.5%. We have one of 15%. And the Bank of England itself expects that to rise to 225 which you might as well say is 25 And our workers, too, are being offered wage increases of 3%. Meaning, if you, uh, to use your immortal phrase, unless you don't know arithmetic, a very substantial reduction in your standard of life. And if you dare to go on strike, as the railway workers and the postal workers have now done, you are excoriated as a wrecker, as a Putin's uh, agent. Uh, you have uh, record gas prices, but your gas prices would be a dream for us because our gas prices have to be seen to be believed. Uh, I suppose what I'm saying is there's a perception in Europe that we are being sacrificed by the United States, which is ready to fight to the last drop of uh, each Euro Ukrainian, but is ready to fight to the last uh, European economy also. That's absolutely true. There is, I mean, to be honest and blunt, most Americans, and I've made this effort in my classroom and in the, here in New York City where I live, uh, most Americans could not tell you where Ukraine was, cannot find it on a map, haven't devoted one iota of thought to it, barely listen when our leaders uh, provide their thin rationales uh, for the war, and all shake their heads at the humongous sums uh, being spent on sending weapons to Ukraine when there isn't enough money uh, to help people solve the most basic problems. One of the ways it is impacting here, and I, I don't know enough about your situation, but we have an out of control housing market. The capitalist system here in the United States is not only pricing food out of the reach of millions, but it is even more aggressively providing housing that is so expensive that people literally cannot. Our record book, for example, now indicates that more people in the ages of 15 to 30 years of age are living with their parents than at any time since the statistics of these sorts of things uh, were begun to be kept by the government. In, in other words, the particularities may differ, but yes, the United States is very, very determined uh, to fight to the last Ukrainian and to hope that more and more of the costs of it, political, economic, military, will be borne by the Europeans. There's, this has been an old American policy. It used to be that Europeans understood that for them, in some ways, the risk might exist that the Russians and the Americans come to an agreement uh, by splitting the difference, namely, who gets what part of Europe. Uh, that No one should imagine that the United States is in any way uh, shy of having things uh, work out like that. It, it, it is a remarkable quality here. It comes from a hundred years of being able to think that the the empire that will end all other empires is this one, the American one, that it outmaneuvered the British who had the last empire. And when you say to them, yeah, but all the signs look like China's coming up to be the next one, they look at you blankly as if, as if the thought had never crossed their mind, even though as you tick through the signs, they get more and more depressed looking because you're confronting them with material they don't want to see. Now, you're the Oracle professor. Help us in these closing uh, minutes. Schultz in Germany it has launched a 65 billion euro package to mitigate the uh, super crisis on the energy front. Not to be outdone, uh, Britain, which is a poorer country than Germany, has announced a package of £130 billion to mitigate that same crisis. Where does that money come from? They used to tell us 
there's no magic money tree. It turns out there's a whole forest of magic <laughs> money trees, doesn't it? Yeah, let me let me respond. I recently saw a number, I believe it came from uh, uh, Christine Lagarde, but for one of the top officials in Europe. And this person had sat down and added up the 65 billion that Schultz in Germany has promised, uh, the, the number you just quoted from, uh, from the United Kingdom, and she added them all up from Europe, and it came uh, to $500 billion have been promised. Okay, I'm an economist. I asked a simple question. What is the GDP, the gross domestic product of Ukraine? What's the value of the goods and services they produce? How big an economy are they? The answer given is $156 billion. In other words, you could triple the economy of Ukraine for the amount of money that is being spent to uh, do whatever it is those weapons are doing in Ukraine, which is not so easy to tell. This is crazy. If you had offered everybody in Ukraine a tripling of their income, which you could have done for that amount of money, we would have been where we are today, minus the bloodshed, minus the wasted money on, on killing each other that we have gone through. The magic money tree is simply a claim on the future. It is a political trick in which the people in power know that it is exciting to spend money. Companies love to have money spent on them. Individuals like to have money spent on them. Politicians will be popular if they spend money and don't tax it. So they said, fine, we won't tax it. We will borrow it. And we will then take the, the, the treasury securities when we borrow money and ask you to cash them in with the central bank for money, which is what they do. And in that way, the money is increased. Everybody is happy and we spend. The only fly in the ointment is that this money has to be paid back. All kinds of businesses and individuals particularly wealthy ones, make all kinds of economic decisions based on the enormous government debt that they now hold. If the government has to pay that money back at some point in the future, it won't be able to without taxing, which is the no-no they dare not do. And then all bets are off as we discover what happens when People who've borrowed a lot of money cannot pay it back. And if people have short memories, that's what happened in the second half of 2008 and 2009, when the global capitalist system crashed. Then it was because private entities had borrowed more money than they could ever pay back. And now it's the governments that are doing it. But the effect in the end will be very similar. I don't, I don't want to stereo. I know you're a New Yorker. I don't want to stereotype things, but this sounds remarkably like a Ponzi scheme to me. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely, you know, the game of a Ponzi hustler is to tell people, I can make you 30%, give me your money. Then you take half of that money and give the 30% to the people you hustled earlier. That keeps the them happy. Your new guy is waiting. You have to find a new sucker to do it again. Meanwhile, half of each bit you put in your own pocket. Eventually, you'll get caught. But by that time, you've squirreled the money away and you do a few years in jail, if even that. And you've made more money that way than you ever could have in legitimate business. The problem is that capitalism is a system that always has created the incentives and then seems surprised when the incentive has the result of incentivizing people to play the game. You know, you're not willing to change the system. You're going to suffer the hustles that often come with a system set up like that. You're a genius. Professor Richard Wolf. thank you very much indeed for joining us on the mother of all talk shows.